Chris, we meet again since the last album. Now we're getting ready for Heartbreak on a Full Moon. Yeah. I'm excited for this album because of the title, and it comes out on Halloween, so don't forget it. Yeah. Okay, so what's the album about? Tell me. And I don't want you to hold back. I need I need to know. My whole like goal for this album was just to kind of like uh, outdo, you know, expectation. Instead of having to have a certain genre of music, or like whether it be pop, right. R&B, hip hop, I didn't want to, you know, be consistent with what was on the radio. And I wanted to talk about what was going on in my life. You know right. what I'm saying? So for me, I think my personal records have been some of my biggest records. Absolutely. You know? And I think for my audience that kind of like grows now, you know, from toddlers to yeah. even, you know, older people. Not yeah. Like, you know, I think the subject matter and the substance behind it, sometimes right. it has to be either clever or like fun. Yeah. You know? It doesn't have to, it has to be effortless. So I think the music that I'm doing it's just an embodiment of me now at 28, you know. Oh, my gosh, you're growing. I can't deal with this. But you're still a baby. Listen, at the end of the day, you're still young. Now, I wanted to talk about if you had to pick one of the songs on there being your baby, which song would it be? Because, you know, I'm I'm always curious to hear artists and what the one song they are, you know, they love the most that's closest to their heart. Now, mind you, there's 45 songs on this album, correct? Yeah, so it's kind of hard. Zam, 45, yeah. Jesus. Okay, I think so for me, it probably would have to be um, the last song. Uh, it's called Yellow Tape. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was just one of these, one of those things where I didn't like kind of force it to happen. Like right. you know, certain songs you can just it just comes to you. So, and I remember being in the studio till like eight in the morning. So in the morning, I was like, dang, I'm tired. And I, and I admit, I was tipsy, I was drunk, you know. Right. And so I heard this beat. I said, hold on. Like, let me go in the booth right quick. And, you know, it was a chance for me to reflect. So when you do hear the song, it's more about, like, you know, everyday life. You know, yeah. what, what everybody struggles and, and and what I've went through. So yellow tape for me is like, cool, that's the caution tape to tell tell us something happened. And, you know, we see, yeah. we're used to seeing that. You know, we kind of desensitized to that aspect of our mm -hmm. life because it's everyday. So yellow tape was just... A reflection record so it brings all of the songs that's fun emotion or whatever back to the root of it and, and you know it's cool 45 songs now i remember and i you never give me credit for questions or colin it's fine we no, were there in the studio the night we said this is the song i just want it everyone be aware yeah we were obsessed with it the minute we heard it and you i'm called it. You so did. thank you you definitely called it. Wait, wait what happened? Say you, it again? You called it. Okay, just one. You were right. You called it. <laughs> you said it from jump. And I even heard Tempo on your Instagram today, like a little snippet oh, of yeah, it. Oh, yeah, we released like three. like. Fam, three three like, slow it down a little. We still, like, let questions <laughs> marinate with people, you know? And I mean, are those, most of the songs that we heard that night, which were impeccable, by the way, will they be part of the 45 songs for the most part? Or is that just stuff you were playing well, a lot of the times, like, I don't think people understand, like, my writing process. You do. Yes. But, like, when we go in and I always say, yo, man, this isn't work. If it feels like work, I quit. Like, you know, yeah. we don't have to rush a song or have to overthink a song. So a lot of the times I don't spend my time writing. It's more of a natural what I'm going through, the vibe right. or the mood at the time. So even with the songs, like, in the, the categories, of the subject matter I'm talking about, I try to just reach every genre. Right. And, and also still be true to myself, you know right. what I'm saying? And, and, you know, inspire people. Have fun, you know, bring you through the ups and downs, the roller coasters, and, and be able to be, like, consistent with it. I yeah. think I've been blessed with amazing fan base. Uh, they go hard for you. You know, so they mm. make me actually focus and, you know, want to invest my own money that I make because of them, you know, right. into my stage so I can make my entertainment that much bigger for them. Or into putting 45 songs out to push the boundaries on, on artistry. Not to say I'm the best or you're going to love every song, but I just wanted to see what my capabilities were or if I had limitations. And once we realize we don't, we just, it's only our own fear, then you just have fun. And that's what I want to do with this album. What Were you scared of anything for this album, like vulnerability wise? Or were you like, I'm just going to put it all out there? Because I was everything. Okay. Everything as far as any anything is energy, negativity, positivity, yeah. uh, ashamed, embarrassed, mm -hmm. uh, selfish, uh, hateful, vindictive, but also sweet, loving, caring, vulnerable, sensitive. So 
heartbreak on a full moon. I just wanted to give what I give, you know, in everyday life, my heart on my sleeve. Yeah. So it's an easier depiction if I can play it out in music and, and narrative in video. So it's easier to be engaging in it instead of me trying to, like, articulate you right. know, the formula to it. You know, it's like, yeah. I just rather y'all just vibe to my, to my stuff. Yeah. You know? But you know what? We do love your videos. Thank you. They are hilarious when you do your Instagram videos. But yeah. I also just, you said it briefly, but you do invest so much of your own personal money in your art. And because I've been doing this for a long time, and Chris, I've known you, and I'm not just saying this, but, you know, a lot of artists don't do that. For the most part, most artists don't, right? They don't, they do what's allotted in their budget that they're not going to have to spend, and they don't go a dime over because they don't want to come out of pocket. But your stage presence, the art that you put behind it, and I've seen the rehearsals, and I see how serious this is for you, is, is appreciated, especially during times like this when we see music be so disposable. You still care so much about yeah. this chris you don't have to anymore you know that right like nah, it's you have to see yeah we all gotta care that's the difference see the music thing you you knew you set that up perfect because you started smiling i seen it i seen it <laughs> but it starts like for me at, at the end of the day i could have jewelry on i could have anything that i feel comfortable in or what i think the idea of dope is you know what i'm saying right. there's an aspiration there's a goal but there's also limitations because we doubt ourselves. So what I'm so right. what, what I'm getting at by that is the things that I do in my artistry, whether it be direct or you know being hands on, giving a hundred percent, is because everybody's gonna say no. Everybody's gonna give you that. Oh, well, you're not good enough. But it's the only one that makes you different than anybody else and makes you succeed is saying no. That's I don't agree with that because you're afraid. So whatever I do, I lead by my own mistakes and examples. So the risk that I take with music and the risk that I take with certain songs or even just doing whatever I want to do, you know what right. I'm saying? It's not just because I want to rebel. I can reflect on that now. But yeah. I can inspire people to know that they can create whatever they want. They just got to really believe they have that capability of doing it. I think that's so important when you say the fear within us is what holds us back from yeah. reaching that. Yeah, and it's natural. Everybody has fears. I'm not, you know, I'm human too. So I just think that we already live in a no. Me you have, <laughs> you, I, I don't, uh, to see how much you've matured in all of these years, Chris, like just even the way you handle negativity, I honestly don't know if I could have done it. Like I, oh, I look at me you. Me either. I, I just, that's why I say to myself, let me stay in the house. <laughs> I don't want to look at my Instagram. Don't say nothing to me. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> but it's. If someone, let's say, who's going through this, where they feel that they have to respond to trolls or whatever, what's the first piece of advice you could tell them to pull back? Because, look, you've had your fair share of clapbacks, which have been funny, and some have been hard, some that yeah. you've also regret. But let's, And that's part of maturing. You're still young, right? Yeah. You're still growing. What would you say is the first step for someone who's constantly feeling like, oh, I want to respond to everything or I feel insecure about things? I think we all are human, so I think we all indulge sometimes in our own negativity. Right. You know, and for me, I can be honest, at a time where I would lash out sometimes because right. you kind of, like, feel that way about yourself if you beat yourself up about anything. Right. So that's why you project that hate and that fear because, oh, why did you say that? Because you're yeah. saying exactly what I think I am. Yeah. That's why we only pay attention to it because you can look at a million comments and say, I love you, and, don't, and just overlook them. But you look at the one comment and say, you ain't yeah because you want that approval when you act like you don't so for me i just kind of had to stay away from it because i'm still impulsive i'm still human and i'm passionate so i don't have to make it it define you know Who what i'm doing are, you know that's another step stepping stone for me on milestone to say look i get to prove them wrong now instead of saying why don't you like me let me fire you up and roast you yeah you know that, it's cool but it also has a it's immaturity and it's boundaries so wow I just don't, it's not fun for me no more. You better than me. Let <laughs> like, me tell you right now, Chris, you have, I'll get to that in a second about how much you've helped me. But I also want to talk about how did those platinum plaques go missing? It was it eight platinum plaques, if if I'm correct. Well, RCA, I don't even want to say nothing because they ain't cut me my check yet. But <laughs> you are so that's, nice. that's a miracle. How were those <laughs> records missing, though? And I, have no, I have no clue. Honestly. Okay. So what does that mean? So someone who's watching, how does that change for you? Like that when when they discover all these records, right, that aren't accounted for your 
work and your art. What does that mean when it gets added? That you have surpassed certain records? In a way. In a way. In a way. Okay. Um, for me, it's just like a blessing. Like, honestly, it's like, couldn't have been any better. You know, I feel like as I've progressed, I've got a lot of success with like, let's say even incarcerated. Yeah. So like, Loyal was number one. Right. You know, so I've had blessings, you know, that I was, I was thankful for, but I didn't know the magnitude or how how much people were actually paying attention to my music. You know what I'm saying? Right. So to even get a get a uh, like a plaque or one plaque right now. We're to, talking eight, by the way. You know, just 15 not million increase in sales. Like, yeah, that's crazy. Like, OK, cool. Well, <laughs> well, at least I know you. now that all the hard work that I, I am doing and me putting out as many songs or videos and always working. It, it has a it has a place and has a purpose. So it just it just letting me know that I'm still doing the right thing. I'm not thinking about the money aspect. It's not about that. It's that, never been that. You know, it's it's all about uh, creating and the, and the passion and the freedom to do so. You know. Yeah. Like we we have that power. Now, when we look at "Welcome to My Life," your personal documentary that you put out there. I'm personally happy that you finally did it. Thank you. I wanted it a while ago because I felt like there were so many things that were uh, misrepresented about you 100%. What made you finally decide to do it? Was it part of the, I'm now a father, I want to document the truth? For me, I think it was more so, um, we started it off on a tour, obviously. Right. So we wanted just to build something organically. And at that time, I think it took almost roughly two years to do the actual whole movie in, in its entirety. So we wanted to start from the, the ground up, in the middle of the muck, like, you know, um, jail, whatever it was, to recap. And, and I always had my cameraman around me since right. I was young. So just to keep footage. So I wanted to basically uh, get an opportunity to do something people don't expect again. Like when, you know, when oh, people yeah. count you out and, you know, because it was honest, it's real. There's there's no sugar coating anything that's went on in my life. And there's no reason for me to be ashamed of my past because I'm a better person now. So doing the, doing the music stuff, that was a blessing in disguise, but also being able to take people on my journey, sit them in my living room or sit them, or sit in their living room and say, who, this, this is me regardless. You feel me? And be truthful. Be honest. I don't have to. I'm not victimizing myself, nor am I pouring the blame. I'm in all the, in acceptance of growth. You know? So for me, I wanted the people to see that because mm. the changes in my life, even the situations, they have real reasons for them. Right. They have explanations, but I did, but no excuses. Yeah. You feel me? Oh, so absolutely. That's, that's if, if I can sum it up in a nutshell, that's yeah. really why I wanted to put it out. And just get my own take on it. Have you watched it over and over? Nah, you know, I, see, I don't like to like self-loathe or, or like to look at it and be like ha ha or gloat. I, I don't even look at my videos after I finish and like edit them. I don't watch them anymore. Yeah. Like I might go back to a clip and be like, okay, cool, that's dope, because I never want to get comfortable. You know what I'm saying? I love being hungry. I love being um, ambitious, right. anxious, uh, free of free of mind to be creative as hell in studio and and do what you want paint do whatever but i love the space to be able to be free so i don't want to be comfortable in my in my consistency right right you know when you had to do the documentary and remembering certain whatever situations and going through that did, did you hurt again were you or were you just like let me get through this well i think when we started actually doing the film it was like you know i was out of jail and certain things like that so my life kind of changed like a little bit because yeah. I started looking at uh, my passion for what I wanted to do. Right. That's why I started painting a lot more. That's why I started, you know, being into design and, you know, just trying to just be as creative as possible. You know, um, I think the things I took for granted yeah. as a as a, a artist was things I didn't care about anymore. You know, I think material things. Who cares? You know, the music is about this, the show, the artistry. The, the fun, the talent. So, right. So for me, just doing it, it was, the emotions were good because I got to kind of be, let them out. You know what I'm saying? There Free. Was a, there was a part of clarity where I got to talk and be myself, but be humble and yeah. be respectful, be the person that, who I really am. Yep. Not, you know, I, I made you believe I could be dangerous. So I made yeah. you believe I could be scary. These are all things that I, I was capable of making you believe. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or even making myself believe, but I knew that they weren't who I was. So I was like, yo, you know what? 
I, I'll get back on track. I just needed to believe I could and, you know, <laughs> listen for a change, you know? <laughs> Are you going to let royalty watch this? She's seen it. She, she came has? to the premiere, like. Does she, wait, first off, does she know you're famous? Does she understand Definitely. the con? Definitely, yeah. Amen. She I knows. Pray. Okay. She asked my, she, 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 the funniest thing is because, like, I, I think last year, on yeah. Pandemonium, when, we, when I did it in L.A., I brought her on stage with me. And she always never was afraid on stage. She'll stay there and just look. Like, she look, she don't even no she, nerves. She's Good. never scared. She asked mom like she was like, "Mimi, can I can I go on stage with daddy? I want to dance with daddy." I said, she didn't say that. I really want to dance. She got her own little drum set. She go upstairs and that's all you hear. I'd be like, "Cool, let her play her drum set so she can go to sleep." <laughs> <laughs> let her go here. That's go it. go. <laughs> but yeah, it's just amazing. I think me being a father now. It's kind of great because I'm a goofball. Yes. So I get a chance to, um, you know, join custody. So yeah. when I get a chance to be by myself, I can turn up, be a grown up. Right. But on when I'm on daddy mode, you know, the you know the fanny pack comes out, you know the, the oh, yeah. uh, New Balance, the dad hat, <laughs> with the bifocals, you know, all that. So it's a good balance, and yeah. I think uh, it gives me a a better audience gauged, you know, because yeah. it gives you that, it gives you that sweetness and it gives you that vulnerability to be able to even uh, connect with a female. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm at the age that I'm 28, still young, but it's not about like, yo, shorty, I got this. What's yeah. happening with it? You, you know, I, I dig your way, boo, yeah. what's happening? You want to be bae? Like, uh, it has to be more God. substance, yeah. you know, you know where I'm at now. So I think my daughter kind of makes me look at myself in a certain standard, but also... Hold her in, hold her in a presence that I wouldn't want to put any bad influence around her. So I had to be more cautious about it. I was know? gonna say your life has changed drastically. Yeah, I ain't, it used to be a, you know freak Nick, uh, <laughs> Uncle Luke at Chris House. Really though. Now it's just uh, probably like Mickey Mouse Adventures <laughs> and uh, Cartoon Network. It, and you've stayed calm through everything. And I don't know if it's just you're used to people trying to come after you and you just allow the truth to come out and you're very peaceful even when the helicopters were around your house you were just like all right like you didn't fight back do you get what i'm saying you just almost like all right I, you know what i know my truth uh -huh. and i'm gonna allow it to happen and it takes a certain chris you have grown drastically you know what it is it just has to be once you understand it's a it's a process behind it as much as it sounds like conspiracy or coincidence, like you just have to know that certain situations, one, before any of that, to separate yourself from some things that are not conducive or not productive for you. So right. me, I used to hear from everybody. I just needed to hear from myself and say, look, I need this time. I like being quiet. I don't need to go to the club. I don't need validation for mm. who I am. You know, so it's just a shift sometimes. And I think with me, it was better for me. You know, I'm not yes. like me doing interviews. You might think I move a lot. It's just because I'm nervous in this damn interview. <laughs> <laughs> like, you feel me? It's not like, oh, he on drugs. No, I'm not. I'm like, we hit the weed. Hey, it comes from right. me. But at the same time, I balance out my life and I don't live for the next person's gossip. And I don't entertain it because it really don't matter. Like, get on stage with me. I'm going to fire that ass up. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Modestly. <laughs> but right. in retrospect, I respect it. It makes me work. It actually makes me want to be better every day because I know I am and I know what I'm capable of, but let me try to be better and better because yeah. it's going to inspire somebody and say, yeah, you know what? I can be better than Chris Brown. Or I, he went through that, so I know that me getting through it earlier, yes. that don't mean it's the end of the road. That just means, cool, I just got to take it serious. Ah, man, listen, mm -hmm. that it's been a journey. And to see how much you have <laughs> just grown because you could have gone a different way. Right. You could have completely shut down, but like, I'm done. I'm moving. I want nothing to do with this. But, you know, Chris, during my hardest times and what I go through, I call you and you just have this positive. It's all right. Keep going. And yeah. I, thank you. Like, Every no, seriously. Time. But you like you real fam. You my sis. So it's like industry still is life. Everything right. that we do, we can never say business is just business because if you're passionate about it, everything is personal. Right. You feel me? So with me, when I do songs with people, I don't do it to be like, oh, I'm the hottest dude right now. I'm not charging them for verses. You know, like when I when I come into New York and we do a press run, I'm calling you like, sis, yes. what you need? I'm yep. coming. You know, 
<laughs> because that's what it's all about. It's about love. It's not about what we're getting out of it. I don't do music because it makes me rich. You know, that's the plus. You know, I would have been doing this if it was free. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I get free music out all the time. I you like really this, do. You know what I'm saying? So with you, it's genuine, you know? Yeah. And we don't come together as people unless it benefits us. Right. You know, it's, it's uh, goodness with intention. And that's just bullshit at the end of the day. Yes. So I'm always going to be as sincere as possible. Look shy, however, however it is, because I'm just yes. analyzing my own life and being okay with it and having fun. So, you know, you know I love you, sis. So yeah, I love you too. And I, I'm really proud of you, which is why I just i am excited for Heartbreak on a Full Moon because, you know, when we hear Heartbreak, we're going to hear you talk about the heartbreaks that you've gone through. At this time, you've told me you don't want to be in a relationship. Are we still in that mode where you're, I'm okay being single and maybe slowly getting to know people? Or where where are we just in case the ladies are curious? Well, for me right now, it's, it's mm, that's, man, I was about to answer it fast, but then I had to think like, well, hold on. Are you open to a, first, are you in a relationship? Right now, I'm open to friendship. I'm be honest, okay. friendship, because at the end of the day, I, I don't want to put a constraint on a female that I might like, and I don't want to have those boundaries in the same, you know, respect because at the end of the day, it should be a choice that you mm. with somebody. It shouldn't be like the benefits of this or I I oh man, but it's this and that. It should it should it should be friends. It should be organic. You should want to be one like stay with that person every day. You should want to do something like cool. I'm cool with not hanging with my homies because my girl is my best friend. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it needs to really be that in right, order right, for right. it to, to actually have a uh, foundation. You know what I'm saying? If you just start off, you know, bang, boom, it's right. good. And, okay, we only hang with each other because we have sex good. Like, it's just going to wither away. You feel me? So yeah, I no, I wanna, absolutely. You know. So you're open to friendships. Yeah. Are you allowing or in the future will you allow yourself to fall in love again yeah i write too many damn love songs not, <laughs> not to <laughs> i believe some of them shit yeah <laughs> this is good okay so in that time yeah. well, let's just we'll put the i guess the requirements someone that you have had a friendship with because i think that is important for you because you are a great friend and i think that that does need to be the foundation are you particular are you uh particular on looks or do you just want someone i know these answers by the way but uh <laughs> are, like when it comes to looks what what matters to you or is it more of a personality for you at this point um 60 40. 64. Okay, what's the 60? I so would have said 50 50, but you would have roasted me if I said it. Yes, yeah, so 60 but looks? Nah, 60 okay. intelligence. I am so proud of you. But 40%, that means you got to be an eight or better. <laughs> Chris, God, this is so. Everyone's laughing. I love it. Sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, it, what if she works in the industry? Do you prefer industry or not? Or you kind of in between, don't really know, have to vibe out? I prefer uh, confidence. Conf I don't care about her profession. As long as she's confident in what she want to do, I'm cool. I shouldn't be that, like, shallow, you know? Because you be like, oh, well, she ain't got no money tonight. <laughs> I know I said that in a couple of songs. But. But you, you can be broke. What? <laughs> This is great. Everyone broke. Hit up Chris right now in his DM. Okay, so do you still check your DMs or no? <laughs> Everyone's loving this. Everyone's <laughs> like, yes! Uh, DMs, you know what it is? <laughs> I be so like, I don't want to end up on no vlogs. Like, I feel you. And you, you don't know. Uh -huh. Like, I don't want to just, you know what I'm saying? I don't fall for the thirst traps. Okay. Because then I think about it like this, right? What can I say? Like, am I going to say, yeah, hey, this is Chris Brown, baby. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. That's corny, right? Yes. But then you got to think about this. How many girls, like, you right. girls have the power of rejection? So how many girls do you think, pretty or not, they can have 800 followers? Look at the inbox. How many? What's up? Hey, you got snap? Yeah. Like, you feel me? So it's nothing I can really say that's going to be funny. I'll say some corny. You know yeah. What I'm but then they would be like, oh, I already lost. I'm corny right now. You right. You feel me? That's too much thinking. So why not DM? No, don't, I don't even look at my DM. Don't look at the DMs. Uh, just okay. find me in traffic. <laughs> How is 
is somebody. Let's say a lawyer. Let's say because I want to see you end up with like a lawyer doctor. Oh, is that just, too much you're pressure? You just trying to give me a get out of jail free card? Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, thought about that actually, but then I think she, she get mad at me. I'm going down. Yes, you uh, are. It's over. <laughs> How would someone just meet you? Like, do you go like to well, restaurants? Well, I feel like we on farmers market. Yeah, look, farmers Whole meet. Whole Foods. Com. What is we on? We on like BlackPeopleMeet.com <laughs> right now. Like, I, it's, my dating game is great. Sis. Okay. All right. Look, she we're trying just trying to, to help me, you. She's trying to set me up. Like, what the? You're so mature now. I feel like this is. No, nah, I'm an asshole. No, you're Everything not. Everything she say, I'm the opposite. Don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so happy for you. And now that, because look, there was a time you were, I don't want to be in a relationship. I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want to focus on music. Yeah. Mind you, you went through this for a very long time. So yeah. the fact that there's a glimmer there's there's just a little bit of hope now. I I would like to see you with somebody that you have a great friendship with. Yeah, dope. Right? Me too. Okay, fair. Okay, now Chris. We agree. I, I wanted to thank you because I know a lot of times I feel that people overlook all the great things that you've done for just people and you never really get the credit. And I know you don't seek it. Mm -hmm. But I really appreciated seeing how you helped out the victims of Hurricane Harvey and you donated 100000 plus to them. And this isn't the first time that you've given back. You're just not the type, one, that people ever talk about who helps. And also, you're not the type to <laughs> ever talk about it. But... Yeah. I mean, well, for me, it's like... Char charity isn't like a, a popularity contest. And I right. think a lot of times we try to... We, we miss the point of what we're donating, you know, right. for to help, to help people. So... Like, you know, you could put people on news like, oh, my God, they donated this or they did that. There shouldn't be a pat on the back for what you should normally do. <laughs> like, mm. if you have the means of doing it, you feel what I'm saying? So when it comes to my charity, right. even though I do so many different organizations and, and donate and do all these kind of, like, fundraisers, I don't look for uh, sponsors. I don't look for... Validation, me or media credit. Attention. Most of the time I say, yo, don't have no cameras here. Right. Because then... My gesture is like giving a homeless person a dollar and saying, you saw that guy, right? Right. See, you got to give me on Friday. That, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you, you don't look for the, you don't, you don't do good things because you get good outcomes. Right. You do it because it's, it's naturally from your heart. So everything that I do charity-wise, they don't have to know how much I give, just the people that are being helped. Because I'm going to give whatever it is. I'm not thinking about the price, you know, and, and, and as a, as a whole and as a people, our, uh, how can I say, camaraderie shouldn't be based around popularity. Mm. So I think a lot of the times people get too trapped in who's going to look good doing it. Right. And or get the camera angle to do it. It's just like working out on your Instagram. Like, yeah, I've been hitting the gym. And I tell you, snap, go off, you leave the gym. You right. just, just wanted to show like you're doing something or you lit in the club. Yeah. You're really bored. You're living a lie. So... It's, it's when people are in need and people are dying and they're, you know, the news is not going to show you that. No. You know, and if we say something, they're just going to throw us into a case. They're going to say somebody got sexually assaulted. They're right. going to say something to throw you off and then you out the way. Yeah. You know, just so the confusion keep going. So when you do get a chance to help, you help because it's the right thing to do, not because it's popular. And you also performed for J-Lo Title X, the benefit concert. That was fun. And the money went to help those in need in yeah. Puerto Rico. How did that happen? Was that a call? Because I know you and J-Lo are cool. You guys have worked with each other before. How does that happen? Like, is it just a call to your manager? Like, hey, we need Chris to do this? Well, I mean, it's just like a lot of the times when we do uh, different relief things. Like, I remember we did uh, Relief for Haiti. We did right. a show in um, in Miami uh, some years back. A long time ago. I remember, that's probably when, yeah, I was young. Dang. <laughs> but uh, as far as this show, it was the same thing. Um, title and everybody had called you know management yeah. it's like yo you want to do the concert and i said of course like i just left you know for the party tour and it was sold out you know and mm -hmm. new york always shows me so much love and i love them you know so doing a free concert was that wasn't even enough to me like we did i did six songs and i was like dang i ain't doing enough i feel like you're such an artist they got you know i feel yeah. like yo let's have fun y'all got concert for free i ain't i ain't, <laughs> I ain't charging y'all might well just let me rock yeah you know so <laughs> It was it's more of a a great feeling to see people enjoy themselves, smiling. Right. Um, in tough times, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying. Um, Brooklyn is a, is a big market, but it's also 
you know, a very poverty stricken market, but right. these people show up and these people care, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of my core audience are, are people who don't have the money or the means to get myself, but they, they actually do. So I would be a fool not to, uh, bring them into existence and sh make them the purpose of my soul existence. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So I love doing that. Me going on stage, like I said, I don't feel like I did enough. I wanted to keep rocking. I had at least about two more albums in me. Well, speaking <laughs> of performances, I heard you might have a, a surprise pop-up out here this week, yeah? Yeah. Uh, dang, she just gave uh, it away. Right? But no, it's, I mean... No, we got a pop-up. What, what can you, you know give us that. a hint? You know, I mean, you I know, know, but what day? I can't tell y'all yet. Well, I mean, how are we supposed to find I'm out? A, I'm going to Instagram it. Okay. So we're going to do it like that. So everybody How knows. long of a notice are people going to have? Just so that, you know... People got, you know, work. Dang, you got the good questions. I would look to management. He's not in the room right good, now. Good, thank God. Shout so, out to I'm just going to just like <laughs> an ETA, probably like a three-hour heads up. Great. Probably. This is a good indicator. I'm only just saying this right now, so it might be something totally different. Cause yeah. I ain't at got least three hours. I got that that's telling me nothing right now, so we good. <laughs> So at least three hour heads up, you're yeah. gonna be performing. It's a surprise pop up. Yeah, just a free concert. We just, I just want to do stuff for you know that. Like my fans really mean everything, so it's not like I wouldn't do a 45 album song if I didn't care about them. So we're gonna do a pop up show. Y'all come out free. Yes. Up, and just act wild, but don't don't get us shut down and shit. <laughs> I can't be dealing with no NYPD. I yeah, no. Nope. already enough. I'm, yeah, I'm good. be cool. Let's be cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Chris, before you go, there's two things I want to do. But one, yeah. I wanted to play something fun with you. And you're going to, I think you'll enjoy this, okay? All right. In honor of your song, Questions, uh -huh. okay, I'm going to ask you a question and you tell me which one you would rather, okay? It's a, it's a classic game of would you rather. Q &A. Yeah. Would you rather date a girl with bad breath or stinky feet? <laughs> Everyone's listening like, which one is it? Halitosis. You know what? I'm going to keep it a buck. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say stinky feet. Why? Because I'm really not a foot person anyway. Yeah. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, the feet, it probably just be like the odor, I would think. Uh, it's just a different type of sweat. But if it's coming from your mouth, I want to look, look at you in your face. I actually want to kiss you. So, it, Stinky it, feet. Yeah, it can't can't be smelling like two cans of bounce that ass. <laughs> I okay. can't do it. All right. Would you rather listen to your new album, Heartbreak on a Full Moon, or silence when you're making love? I'm playing mine. Shit. <laughs> You are yeah. so hey, cocky. Hey, y'all be. Go get it. it that, when y'all hear it, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm yes. saying? Yes. Okay. I don't like no silence then. I mean, I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> no noise. No noise. Okay. <laughs> Would you rather, if you had a two-seater car and it was pouring outside, yeah. would you rather pick up your best friend, such as Ant, mm -hmm. or would you rather pick up your lady and you can only fit one in the car? Who's gonna be that lucky person? You know what you said, two seater. So it has it has like a roof on it. That's it. It just has, it has it has a top. Yeah, it has a top on it. Oh, I got my chivalry's there, so I have to let the lady get in the car. Okay, so ain't got an Uber account. Yeah, he'll I, be fine. Yeah, okay, definitely. last one. This is gonna be tough. Would you rather, bro, bro, date a musician or an athlete? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Nobody. What'd you say? What'd you say now? <laughs> what? What? Who's dating who? <laughs> what are you going to do when royalty wants to start dating? I don't know. Nothing about what you're talking about. <laughs> Roro is never going to date. Anybody. No. Nope. She's so, you know, she's literally, like, she is your twin. Yeah. From her like, face. I, did, I knew what I put my mom through, right? And I was like, man, it won't that bad. I'm cool. She like 10 times what I was, but smart, though. She's Respectful, very, very polite. But I'm like, oh, you know, she knows. Oh, you know what you're doing. But she oh, get away so with it with cute. me. I let her do anything she want. Well, not I. No, I'm not gonna say that because I'm not gonna be like I'm not gonna have one of them kids that you see <laughs> see, see in, the, in the store that be in the floor just crying and then they they got the little leash on them and they pulling them. <laughs> like first of all, you're a bad parent for putting a leash on your kid. Yeah, take the leash. And off. second of all, what the hell wrong with the kid crying <laughs> like that? <laughs> <laughs> Chris. Sorry if I'm being too rude. No, we love it. Chris, I before you get out of here, and just as a reminder, I'm excited to hear your vulnerability on your new album. 
I'm sure we could all put all the pieces together. Thank you for always allowing us to share your vulnerability because you don't have to, right? You could just stay closed off and just give yeah, us you know, great records. It's but hard to be light skin, you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I love you, sis. I appreciate it. You and we're excited. Speak, you know what I'm saying? Halloween, that is when it comes out. Yeah. Pre-order. Make it happen and make sure that uh, whoever on the back end is counting these records, y'all do a good job this time and don't just show up randomly yeah, with sis. missing records. Come, sis. Now, I, before you go, Chris, I wanted to give you this. Colin isn't here. Um, he's got a little cold. But, Chris, you have always been there for me and you've always been there for Colin. You're holding it. I thought he was giving it to me. It is for you. You hate him, bro. And it's, um, I got you two of them just in case. And it's, uh, you were never shy from supporting Colin. You were never shy for standing up for originally why uh, this was all happening to stand up for, you know, black people in America, but black men who are wrongfully getting killed by police officers who aren't held accountable. Yeah. But more than anything, Chris, on my darkest days, you have called just to check on me. You've checked on Colin, and I can never thank you enough for that. Like, that's real, it's genuine. And I and I'm trying not to be emo, but it's a look. There's a lot of people who might say they support, but you were the beginning. You were the first, and uh, I just I can't thank you enough. Yeah, I mean, even with that, I don't even like. You know, I don't care if I'm the first. You know what I'm saying? I know. Like, thing, I know you don't. Like, so I know. That, like, I know the message, how they see it. Like, that's not our goal. You know what I'm saying? Right. If I support you in, in what he stands for, he stands for everybody. Yes. He stands for, I've, I've been incarcerated. I've been a stereotype. I've been everything that's bad or what they say is bad. So he's been everything the opposite of me. You feel what I'm saying? So... He's who I look up to, and even though we're all, you know, brothers and sisters, we homies and stuff, we not we not the the problem with what's wrong with our country. Right. We're just trying to shed light on what's wrong with our country. So yeah. I'll say it, but you can only believe Chris Brown's biased opinion, but like I said, before they throw a curveball, <laughs> and then I'm out here over-explaining myself. But with him, he don't have to do that. But he smiles when I can't sometimes. So I commend him for it. And like I said, I, I stand for, for what's right. You know, I'm not always going to be perfect, but at the end of the day, if I had my negative or positive balance to pick from, I'm going to go to the light every time. And he's, yes. he's right for what he does. And I'm going to stand here, and all the other people should stand here and do it too. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you know, we can't encourage everybody because <laughs> they ain't getting a look or they ain't getting a check. But right. Don't do it then. If, you, if, you, if you're not going to stand, sit the fuck down. Mm. And I just... I, just, I mean, stand for something. Take a knee. Yes. <laughs> and I said, like, fuck on. down. Fuck that. Take a knee. And I said, fuck that again. Take yeah. a knee. <laughs> I just, Chris, it's so important when we hear, and I, I love the post. I love that you are very aware of what's going on in our country. And it's so important to hear that from you. Can you explain to people in case they don't understand why they should care about what's going on around our country because it does directly affect us. Yeah. Well, I look at it like this, right? One, we don't have modernized school systems. Right. So we're, we're learning like decades old stuff, you know? So. And a skewed narrative. Yeah, definitely. And I think there is more stigma on separation everywhere in the world. Right. You know, everybody has to be better or less than because they're different. You know, they don't see the, the equals or they can't even talk it out. You know, right. they don't even want to hear it. So I think it's just on ignorance because the lack of information we've all been given, not just us as one race. I think I think we haven't been doing our homework on any any race or any species or how to really figure it out because the powers that be have blocked your mind by focusing on what you're going to do with your fear. Mm. They, they know you're 10 steps ahead of you. So, okay, we know you're afraid of this, so we're going to shift you this way. You, you know, conformity. But education. Yeah. So enlighten your own mind. Be curious. You don't have to be a, a physics nerd or genius or right. a rock star or you don't have to even have an IQ to be smart. You can, but you can be aware. You know, you can have hum humanity in you. And all I exude is love. So whatever hate, whatever things I'm going through, I I reflect it and I always will always have love that yeah. I that I look at. And so when it comes to that, it's important for us to know that where it comes from. 
our fears, bullying, problems in school, differences. It's because of love. We want it. We want to attain it. We want to have it. And when we don't get it, we make excuses for it. Mm. You feel me? So as far as that, you know, everybody just got to really get better. We all got to do better. I got to do better. Everybody got to do better. Right. You know? 